honest, ko PJ toku ingoa. He kai o kou fao mo mo aho kite fare kadere o Tamaki Makoto. For our next creative kaitiaki adventure, we are getting to know one of New Zealand's most treasured manu, the South Island takahe. So grab out your paper and pencils and join us while we get to know this bird, learn how to draw a takahe, maybe learn how to do some origami, and also some ways that we can be kaitiaki for the kararehe of Aotearoa. Let's learn some useful kupu that we can use when we're talking about takahe. Over to you, Cornell. My name is Cornell. I'm one of the educators here at the Farikarere Hill Farm, Kodo, Auckland Zoo. So let's have a practice of pronouncing takahe. It's got made up of two smaller words within the word itself, within the name, taka and he. And we've got to drag out the e because it's got a little macron over the end of the e there. So we, we say taka he, we combine that, taka he. Now there's three different areas of the um, manu or the bird I wanted to talk about. One is the feathers. Now the feathers in Te Reo Māori is huru huru. You practice that at home, huru huru. The claws or the feet of uh, the takahe are called mati hao, mati hao, mati hao. That's a cool word for the claws or the feet of the takahe. The other one is the beak. The Māori name for beak is ngutu, which is the same word for lips. So the beak of the takahe is Rutu. Tēnō pai, thanks Cornell. Kia ora e mai, ko nai o toku ingoa. Takahe are flightless birds endemic to us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. These large blue birds get up to 3.8 kgs. They breed once a year and will raise one or two chicks every season. The flightless takahe do actually have wings. Like the kiwi, they have small vestigial wings tucked in at the sides of their body that are too small for flying. And they have thick, strong legs for moving around their habitat. Takahe have strong red beaks, which are perfect for cutting through their tough tussock grass and getting to the softer undergrowth that they like to eat. Takahe look a lot like their cousins, the pukeko, but there are a few key differences. Pukeko are not actually endemic to us here in New Zealand, they also live in Australia. They have a lot smaller bodies and they can also fly, unlike our takahe. So now you know the difference between the two birds. Alright, I hope you've learnt lots about the takahe. Let's check in with PJ and learn how to draw one of our very own. Cheers, Niall! Well, my favourite way to connect more with nature and wildlife is through art. So I'm going to show you how to draw a takahe in a few really easy steps using my markers. But you can use whatever you've got at home. Now I've picked out some green, blue, red and brown markers as well as some black markers and a pencil and a razor. But like I said, you use whatever you prefer, whatever you've got. And we'll get started. First off, we're going to sketch out the base shapes using our lightest colour. So I've got this light green. I'm going to do an oval for the takahe's big body, a circle for the head, and then two overlapping triangles underneath to give our takahe big, powerful legs. For the tail, we'll do a little curved line like this and some scruffy feathers. Then just four easy lines to give our takahe legs. Connect up the head and the body using the little squiggly lines, and then we're going to draw out the beak. A circle on the forehead, a curved triangle shape for the beak, connect it up, and then add in an eye, a nostril, and that line for the mouth. Now that we've mapped out the shapes for our takahe's body, we can start adding in the feathers. We'll do some squiggly lines to make the feathers a bit ruffled, and divide the feathers up into different colour sections. When you're ready, we'll fill in those sections, starting with green all over the takahe's back, just being careful not to go out of the lines. We'll use blue for the takahe's legs, chest, and its head. Again, just like I'm doing, you might want to outline the section before you fill it in, just to be sure you're not gonna go outside the lines. And take extra care around that eye. If you've got a darker blue, that can help add some definition or shading, especially for that leg that's actually on the other side. 
then we go in with some red for the beak and the strong legs. And lastly, brown for our Takahe's eye. Now, if you look at a picture of a Takahe, you'll notice that it has more than just three colors in its feathers. It's more like a spectrum of color across its body. So go in there with some different shades of green and blue, or even some brown, and make your Takahe look more realistic on the page. Now, don't take too much care of what direction the lines are going, because the Takahe's feathers are actually quite messy and ruffled in real life anyway. Now what I'm doing here is I'm being very lazy and I'm hiding my Takahe's feet in long grass because I'm not very good at drawing animals, fingers and toes. Now we get to my favourite part of every drawing and that's making our animal pop off the page with a big, thick, black outline. So I go around the whole outside of the body with a thick marker and then any smaller details inside you can do with a smaller, finer marker. Can you see how much difference that makes and how much it makes all the different colours and body parts really stand out? Now the Takahe at Auckland Zoo have these little leg bands on them so that we can tell them apart. So I'm just going to add one on here. Now my Takahe is pretty much done, but the cool thing about art is you can do as much or as little as you want and everyone's is going to look totally different. So I'm going to add in some labels to help me remember the kupu that Cornell taught us earlier. Remember, Nutu for beak, Huda Huda for feathers, and Mati Hao for claws. Maybe you want to add some fun facts on there. Whatever you decide to do, please share your mahi with us online using the hashtags Creative Kaitiaki or Create with Auckland Zoo, because we'd love to see it. Alright, let's go check in with Catherine to see what she can tell us about Takahe out in the wild. Ko Catherine Toku Ingwa. By now you've hopefully learnt a lot about the Southern Island Takahe and what makes it so special to us here in Aotearoa. These amazing manu once roamed all over the South Island until pressures from things like habitat destruction and introduced predators caused their numbers to decline. In fact, for the longest time we thought that Takahe were extinct until they were rediscovered in Fiordland's Murchison Mountains in 1948. The rediscovery of the Takahe launched Aotearoa's longest running endangered species recovery program. The Department of Conservation's Takahe Recovery Program has worked for the last 70 years to bring the species back from the edge of extinction. Today, Takahe are considered nationally vulnerable with just 400 birds left in Aotearoa. These birds are still really rare and unfortunately there are still many threats that they face every day. The Takahe's cousin, the Pukeko, is a much smaller species of swamp hen that we find here in Aotearoa. They are way more common and most people have probably seen them walking around in different urban areas. Pukeko can fly, which means that they can get away from most mammalian predators. They also lay about four to six eggs each breeding season, which means that they raise quite a few chicks each year, and this helps to keep their population numbers quite high. Takahe, on the other hand, are flightless, which means that they cannot escape from mammalian predators. They also only lay about one to two eggs each year, which means that they don't have very many chicks. And stoats are an especially big threat to them since they kill the chicks before they reach breeding age. This makes it near impossible for the species to recover without human help. The Department of Conservation's dedicated Takahe recovery program that I mentioned earlier continues to work really hard to increase Takahe numbers and the aim is to establish wild populations in the grasslands of the South Island as well as on offshore islands and wildlife reserves in the North Island. Here at Auckland Zoo, our amazing bird team also helped to look after Takahe in the wild by providing health checks for the birds on behalf of DOC. These health checks are very important because with such a small population, every single bird is precious. Protecting Takahe and all of the amazing endemic birds that we have here in Aotearoa is a job for everyone. The environment needs us all to be guardians of kaitiaki to help keep it healthy. Next, let's check in with Tori to get some ideas of how we can be kaitiaki for the animals in our neighbourhood. I'm sure that you've had an amazing day already learning about all of the features that a takahe has. Now we're going to look at how we can be a kaitiaki and help look after the environment that these amazing birds call home. 
of the actions that you can do to be a kaitiaki is actually around looking after your pets. So one of the things that you can do is you can put your dog on a lead when you're going for walks around your local gardens or any coastal walks that you may be going on. This will make sure that your dog doesn't disturb the animals at any of their nesting sites and it'll keep our native and endemic wildlife safe. Another action that you can do with your cat is actually put a collar on it with a bell so that the birds can hear your cat coming or even keep your cat inside at night to help protect those native and endemic species that fall out at our home. If you feel like getting creative at home or at Kura, you can have a go actually creating a tracking tunnel. So a tracking tunnel is a great tool to be able to tell whether or not you have pests in your garden or whether or not you have native wildlife that calls your garden home. One of the things that you can do in order to attract more native birds into your garden is to have a go planting some native trees. So you could either have a go planting some native trees either in your own garden or join a local community group because sometimes they go out to local reserves and they actually plant native trees. This gives our birds a place to call home and nest and it even provides them with a food source. Another kaitiaki action that you can do in order to help our native and endemic species is to make sure that you clean your gear before visiting any pest-free islands. These pest-free islands are the large stronghold for a lot of our endemic bird species and it's really important that we protect them and make sure that no pests get on these islands. So if you're ever lucky enough to visit one of these pest-free islands, please make sure that you check your gear for any pests and make sure that you use any of the cleaning stations that they might recommend that you use so that we can look after and protect our endemic species. Thank you so much for doing your part and helping to look after this beautiful place that we get to call home. If you do have a go trying any of these kaitiaki actions that we've shared with you today, then please share with us using the hashtag, hashtag create with Auckland Zoo. We love to see how you guys are being kaitiaki and how you're helping to look after the environment. Hey Tori. Hey Kat. Thanks for sharing all that amazing information about how we can be kaitiaki for our takahe. Now I've learned so much today about the species and I'm trying to think of a way that we can actually share all these amazing fun facts with our family and friends by doing some crafts. So would you like to help me out to do our craft today? That sounds amazing. I'd love to. Awesome. Well, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to show you how to make a chatterbox and make it look like a takahe to share your amazing facts that you have learnt today. First up, these are the things that you will need in order to do this craft. You will need some paper, some markers or pencils, a ruler, scissors and maybe even a pencil. So we're going to measure the shorter side of your paper because as you can see my paper is a rectangle and we need to make it into a square. I'm then going to measure that length of the shorter side onto the longer side to really try and make my piece of paper as much of a square as possible because that's going to make it much easier later on. I'm going to cut along the line and just check out to make sure that I've got a square there now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the top left point of my square and I'm going to fold it right down diagonally to the bottom right side. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So I'm going to take the top right corner there and fold it down to the left bottom side. Fantastic. So now I'm going to take each point and fold it into the center, that little center mark that I can see there. So as you can see here, I'm folding each point in and I'm making an even smaller square. Now we're going to turn this over, we're going to fold the square into half, so it will look like a triangle there. So fold it in, then fold it back out, and on the other side, fold it in and fold it back out. Just slightly turn your square now, so it looks like a diamond. I'm now going to take the four points, and I'm going to fold each point into the center, just like what I did on the other side of my square. Okay, let's see what's going to happen next. Now this bit's a little bit tricky and a little bit fiddly, but what I'm doing is I'm placing my fingers into the little folds that have been created through all of the folding that I've done today. And I'm going to pop them out and I have now created my chatterbox shape, which is fantastic. Look at it, it's taking shape. But it doesn't look like a takahe right now. So I'm going to start now 
adding my colors onto it. This is quite tricky and you might need some help for this, but take either your pencil or a really light color. And while you've got it in that 3D shape, you need to try and think about what the Takahe beak looks like. Now the Takahe beak starts right up high and it goes right down low. It's a very narrow, but long beak on the face. So I'm just sketching my beak here, thinking about where it's going to be so that it looks like when I move my chatterbox that the mouth or the beak, I should say, is opening. So now I'm going to spend some time coloring my Takahe and I do that just by flattening out the paper, paying attention to the lines and I just keep going back and checking. So this is a little bit of a tricky process, uh, which is why it's important you just keep checking to make sure that you're coloring in the right part, the color that you actually want. Make sure also you add their beautiful brown beady eyes. Now for adding our facts, we're going to fold it out there and we can sort of see there are these little shapes there, uh, like these lines, these invisible lines from all the folds. I'm going to add a fact to each of these, a word that might describe a takahe that I can give you more information about it. So here you can see I've added words like poo, feathers, and all these other words here, some information I've learned. Then I can lift up the flap and actually write my answer there. So I'm gonna write a little bit more information about it. Well, lucky last, now it's time to find someone to test out my chatterbox on. So I'm gonna test out my chatterbox on with Tori. Let's see if she's up for it. All right, so I'm gonna show you, Tori, how to do this. So I've got my gorgeous Takahe chatterbox here. Would you like to tell me what your favorite number is? So number three. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. Now, would you like to pick the fact you would like to know about the Takahe? I'd love to learn about their feathers. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up. And under feathers, it says that they are blue and green, their feathers. Amazing. So there you go, some facts we want to learn there. So we hope you have lots of fun making some craft. And we're throwing it back to you now, PJ. Happy day. Yummy cat. Cheers for sharing your awesome craft ideas with us. I'm gonna head home and try it out myself. Now, thank you guys for joining us for another creative Kaitiaki adventure. We always love having you come along while we get to know the Momo Takitaki of Old Terawa. As always, we love to see what you create. So please do share your mahi with us online using the hashtags creative kaitiaki or create with Auckland Zoo. And we'll be back next time to explore another friend from our backyard. Until then, kakite anō kaitiakima.